Hi everyone, uh, this time we're going to try with a VM we just created in Azure portal and we would like to host Hyper-V within the Azure VM. That's what we are trying to do. So this VM is V3 or V4 mod. Uh, let me show you that in a minute. If you see here, this is uh, D4S V3 version. So this should work for us with the Hyper-V installed capabilities. I just logged into this VM and now let's go and install the required roles. I'm gonna enable Hyper-V role hypervisor so it should allow me to install Hyper-V. Yeah. If this works uh, that means the VM is capable of um, enabling hypervisor within the Azure uh, VM. So in fact it has taken so all the defaults. I'm gonna take my network card as this. Uh, it has just a one network card. So I'm going to take as the hypervisor network adapter This is where it's gonna do but before you do actually you need to set your IP as the Static otherwise what would happen is you would lose the communication So as a best practice what you do is just open up your command prompt and type IP config slash all so that you get every possible information and simply open your network connections here uh, view of network card properties or go to the uh, sharing center and just the change adapter settings uh, you can see here this is the one adapter what you have here so i'm just closing all of them and uh, just go to hyper uh, version v4 and type whatever you have the static ip for example in my case uh, it is currently showing as 10.0.0.4 so I'm just going to give that IP and that subnet and also I'm going to configure the required gateway as well as the DNS suffix also I'm going to give that's why uh, that's very important in fact including the DNS and other settings whatever it is available on that whatever you're getting from the DHCP so the same things uh, you're gonna configure here so in my case I'm just giving 10.0.0.4 and then 255.255.0 and the gateway as 10.0.0.1 and the DNS uh, which is interesting if you can see here's 168 uh, 129.16 so give the same thing otherwise you can't connect to the you can't enable a connection with the server so make sure that you actually configure the settings before you enable hypervisor role and also the dns suffix which is critical in this case which uh, if you need to have the internet you need to configure that in fact so i'm just going to the properties and here i'm entering the dns suffix also and registering click ok ok uh, that would actually um does a work whatever we wanted to complete so you may lose the rdp connection and immediately it will restore back so if i just go back here and type ip config all i would get it as hey you have the same settings if you can see here it's coming dns everything is same so that's it once you have done these settings just take it whatever the settings you wanted so in this case in fact um we'll just you know verify what was the mac uh, it is coming ip config all because in the hypervisor it was actually showing too but here the name is actually Hyper-V network adapter. So make sure that similar one which is this because we configure on top of this So it's going to be this uh, uh, This to be taken out so that I mean this should be uh, ticked so that it's going to install the hypervisor component uh, Virtual switch component inside that network card. So we are just going that and I do have here D drive which uh, which let me show you here if I go to the disk management I just add it to this VM another uh, disk so I'm just going to create that because my all future VM should be part of that specific drive letter which is in this case I'm gonna give as D drive or F drive whatever in this case so it's going to be F drive for me and I'll say a hyper V this is not a mandatory step but you know having a separate disk uh, would make more sense for us to configuring inside that so it's just formatted and i can open up this drive also from my computer or from here so you can check it here i have the second drive also so i'm just going to configure here a folder in this case hyper 
uh, hyper v so that it's just gonna create here within this all the required virtual machines so that i can properly segregate if really required do a restart so that's what is going to happen once you install this it's going to be rebooted automatically so from here onwards i would be you no know, quick uh quickly doing the uh fast forward so that uh, it will not waste your time now into the password that should able to connect in fact if not, we may have to wait for some more time because it's doing in the background a few of the reboots. It just connects back and I could see that the wizard are also going further and saying that, hey, you have completed the uh, Hyper-V role to be enabled. So we have successfully enabled the Hypervisor uh, role. So we can use tools to open up Hyper-V and then we can also create a virtual machine from here and within that VM uh, whatever you are going to create for example demo I'll just give as um, my demo GC example my domain controller which I'm going to do so I'll just create here generation 1 and whatever the RAM I want to give for example in this case I'm going to give 4 GB and uh, this is going to be switch virtual switch whatever the switch it is there and I'm going to install with any of the AS, ASO or I'll install later point that would automatically come to the internet for you as well as the VM can be accessed. So it's going to be your test or hypervisor uh, test VM or you have the virtual machines or you can create as many as you want it based on your based on your VM type and VM size. That would conclude this video. Thank you for watching this.